Thanks to its association with the French PSA conglomerate, Vauxhall was able to introduce a plug-in version of its mid-sized Grand and X SUV back in 2019. Now that car, rebadged simply Grandland, has been upgraded inside and out with a hybrid range based around the more affordable front-driven drivetrain. It remains an undeniably interesting package for a family buyer wanting a degree of EV tech, but not quite ready to take the plunge into full battery motoring. These days, Vauxhall only offers this hybrid Grandland model with the lower powered two wheel drive 225 PS petrol drivetrain. No one seemed much interested in the four wheel drive variant with 300 PS, so it's been dropped. The engine is a Peugeot-derived 1.6-litre petrol turbo unit mated to a single electric motor with drive via an 8-speed auto gearbox. It's a pretty rapid confection. 60 miles an hour from rest takes 8.9 seconds on the way to a top speed of 140. It's 84 miles an hour in all-electric drive, but getting anywhere near that would decimate the quoted 34-mile driving range capability. The bulk of this particular contender, 1,735 kilograms, is evident in the slightly firmer way it rides across more terrible tarmac tears, an issue the engineers have tried to address with softer suspension settings, which in turn results in an extra degree of body roll through the bends should you try and chuck this car about in the kind of manner a typical owner never would. You get three main driving modes, with the one you'll be using most of the time being the hybrid setting that chooses the best mix of electric and petrol propulsion to suit the driving style whilst optimising efficiency. The alternative settings are either sport, where the car combines the power of the electric and petrol motors to offer livelier performance, and electric, where the car uses only the battery-powered electric motor, resulting in an ultra-quiet and smooth drive with zero exhaust emissions. As usual with a plug-in, there's nothing apart from different badging and an extra charging flap to designate this hybrid variant's PHEV status. As well as losing an X in its name, this Grandland gains quite a lot in terms of its adoption of the brand's far more interesting visor trim detailing on the front of the car. This sees Vauxhall's latest Griffin logo proudly positioned in the centre, flanked by slim LED headlamps and more muscular bumpers. Inside, changes have been made with the adoption of Vauxhall's latest pure panel cockpit with two widescreen displays for more of a digital experience. Ahead of the driver is a display of 12 inches in size, offering up essential information, while the central 10-inch display controls all infotainment via a touchscreen. As before, driver and passengers benefit from the elevated seating position typical of an SUV, which ensures good visibility in all situations. And in the second row, well, in terms of legroom, there's space for an average size adult to sit behind a six foot driver in reasonable comfort. Like most cars in this class, you'd really be pushing things if you wanted to try and accommodate three adults back here. But a reasonably low centre transmission tunnel makes that possible if need be. Finally, let's take a look at the boot. Now, once the tailgate raises, you're faced with a square usable space, though it's not particularly large in this hybrid variant, just 390 litres. That's quite a bit down on the more satisfying 514 litre capacity you'd get if you were to opt for one of the conventional engines. We ought to apply real-world thinking to projections of likely fuel economy because the Fantasyland official combined WLTP figure up to 192 mpg clearly isn't likely to be replicated by the average owner. As a featherfoot, we suppose 80 to 90 mpg might theoretically be possible, but your realistic average is going to be much less than that, and certainly less than you'd get from the equivalent diesel model. Rely on the petrol engine alone and you'd struggle to average 35 mpg. The WLTP CO2 return, 29 grams per kilometre for SRI trim or 31 grams per kilometre for Elite Spec with its larger wheels, will mean attractively low BIK figures based around a 20% rating. The insurance group is 24E, 
and charging the 13.2 kilowatt hour battery takes three hours with a standard mode 3 cable or one hour 45 minutes if the optional onboard charger has been fitted which really ought to be standard you'll need eight hours to charge from a domestic socket we can see the attraction of the plug-in hybrid suv we really can but with all of the models of this sort currently available, you have to be prepared to pay a big premium for the extra tech and accept practicality compromises in return. In this regard, the Grandland Hybrid is no different from its market rivals or from the Peugeot 3008 Hybrid and Citroen C5 Aircross Hybrid models that share its engineering. As with those French cousins, with upper spec versions of this car, the primary issue lies in pricing that isn't too far off what you pay for a plug-in SUV of this kind with a premium badge. And that's a hard problem for a volume branded product to overcome. But shop for a model with a kind of attractive finance deal your Vauxhall dealer will probably be able to offer and the picture might look very different. Then it'll be simply a question of making sure you regularly plug the thing in. If you can work all of that out and you cover only short distance family mileage, then visits to petrol stations might become pleasingly irregular and a fresh dimension in family mobility could open up to you.